so important. It sets you up for the rest of the day. It sets you up for the rest of the day. The rest of the week. Today's Monday. Which Today kind of doesn't feel Monday. like a Monday. It doesn't at all. I think it's because of Bills game. That's also why I'm dressed like this. <laughs> I have to go host like a thousand person tailgate in my little Bills gear. Um, but I think that's also why. Like Also, like I think that's kind of the beauty of being in real estate or just a business in general. Is you kind of get to make your own schedule. Which I've talked about this a thousand times. You know, there's pros and cons to everything. But it's kind of nice to be able to show up when you want to. And like your mom, we're in her beautiful office right now. If she doesn't <laughs> want to come to the office and she wants to work from home. She can do that. Um, but hey, guys, it's Lauren. Welcome back to the podcast. Today we're here with Izzy or Isabella. Hello. And um, yeah, we're just enjoying the vibe. So if you don't know, when did we actually take our real estate course? Was it July, end of July? So we took our real estate course in the beginning of June. What? Yeah. Oh, I've just been like lying like, for a <laughs> while. Wow. Okay. Um, so we did not know each other like six months ago we had no idea who we were we were which was beautiful and we just started doing real estate and like i don't know about you but i didn't think i would do real estate until i was like 30 years old and then i met this couple they were out drinking in the middle of the day the one day even though i have no desire to do that and they were <laughs> like uh, i was like what do you do and they're like real estate and i'm like okay like let's do real estate and then as i was going through this process and i kind of knew you from the girl across the room like we didn't start connecting towards like the second half of the course just like i mean we did but you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it was just like, um, I don't know. Oh, I felt like I was being portrayed as I was making it come across like real estate was like really easy. Like it was like, oh my gosh, Lauren's like going through her real estate course. It's a 77 hour course. And then she's a real estate agent and she's making millions of dollars. Like I want to do that. And then I was like, guys, this is like your, I do my Saturday mornings. I'm going on like a home inspection. I'm going out to a listing. I'm doing open houses for agents and you're not making any money yet, which is fine. It's part of it. Almost feels like being back in college, but having a friend like you that's also going through the baby steps of real estate is like, okay, are you, uh, is this difficult right now? Are you <laughs> investing every second you're having right now to do this? And you're like, yes. And like, it's okay. And we are just, we basically take turns of like talking each other off the ledge, even though we both <laughs> found, I feel like we both found a lot of success for the beginning, but like, I can't even imagine what it is if you're not finding those baby successes. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, cause it's, this is a grind. It can be so discouraging. Like, so when you take the course, I mean, I'm sure from you, you've had the same kind of perspective, but you're super excited. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna take this course. I'm gonna learn everything and I'm gonna come out. I'm gonna have all these clients. I'm gonna make making all this money, meeting all these new people. Let me tell you, the course is the tip of the iceberg. The course is literally like getting your permit. Like when you're driving a car, like you can kind of show up and you'll probably pass. Not that it's like, but you know what I mean? Like you'll probably pass, but that like, just cause you take your permit does not know you know how to drive a car. No, <laughs> no. And you wouldn't, it's like having your permit and driving in New York city. <laughs> <laughs> like you are like not that. prepared for that yeah and we love tom cusack he he's great yeah so that's where we took our real estate course we took it in person i just like didn't i'm not an online school girly like no. I, I knew i needed to be in person i wanted to make connections and i wanted to just be like held accountable like it's nice to not have an office to go into but it's nice to have somewhere to go like to learn 2020 really taught me that when you're working, playing, exercising all in the same place, it's just not good. You need that like separation a little bit to get your mindset there. So Tom Cusack Center is where we went um, and where you can go to get your real estate license mm -hmm. if you want to in the Buffalo area. Um, but like, so how did you find out about Tom and like, how did you, what was your, so your mom's in the mortgage business, but how did you Jeez. come to um, like wanting to get into real estate yourself? So it, <laughs> I love telling this story because it's just wild. So, um, so I, I just graduated from college this past spring and it was my senior year right around spring of 2023 is when the realization came to me. Um, but you know, my whole senior year, I was very stressed mm. i was like what am i gonna do after this like what did I, you go to school for again so i went to school for business oh okay i got my international business degree with entrepreneurship she's a business girl yes we, business I mean, we knew that yes so business for me that's why i went into business is because it was very broad and i knew i could do a lot with it i just wanted to understand more of that aspect of whether it's marketing 
economics, which not for me, mm -hmm. um, even though I'm in real estate, which kind of goes along with that, but you get the gist. So, so I'm sitting there and I, like I said, I minored in entrepreneurship. So I knew that I always wanted to take that path. Um, it's, it's something that really excited me. Those classes were my favorite, the teachers. Yeah, what kind of entrepreneur class was, like what were like the names of your classes? Of that? Oh gosh, so the names specifically. So I remember one was creativity and innovation. Okay. That was one of them. Uh, one of them was my capstone class, which is like what the seniors take as like their, their staple package class for the whole minor. I, I can't remember exactly the specific names of the courses, but one thing I did take away was my professors for all of these classes, mm. they were just interesting people. They weren't the academia type. They weren't, you know, PhDs or, you know, that type of professor. They were more so successful people in business mm. who decided to teach a course about entrepreneurship. Those, okay, God, I see you. Like, it's just like all the conversations I have always start to like overlap and it's just like so like confirmation validating. Like I was talking to a friend, he was in town for business and he runs the Buffalo International Film Festival mm -hmm. and like his like nine to five is like, he's like a, a school professor. And I was having a conversation with him the other day. I'm like, you know, like, my favorite professors were ones that were actually in the field. Like, there's nothing more contradicting that people go to school for however many years and then they just end up teaching, which there's a purpose and point for those people too, but, like, there's something so inspiring, mm -hmm. like, where, like, my mentor, Val Bello, like, she was, like, you know, she won awards for the radio. She was doing it. Like, you know, she had went back into higher education, but it's like, whoa, if you can do it, I can do it. Right, and I, I found that those people were just they were real mm. with you and they really focused on teaching you things about reality and real life and how things actually are in the business world instead of just doing some things on paper that actually doesn't help you in life. And still to this day, I have great connections with a few of my entrepreneur teachers um, that I keep in touch with. And actually, one of my favorites, shout out to Dave Clifford. Mm -hmm. um, he, his wife is a realtor. Oh, wow. But obviously in Ohio, but he was like, if you ever need anything, you know, I'm sure she'd love to talk to you. Anyway, besides the point, I'm going on a tangent. Mm -hmm. I wasn't interested in anything. I would go to these career fairs and um, God bless the people who were there and trying to recruit and, you know, <laughs> trying to help the students. But I, you're like, I don't want to do any of this. No. And I was like, there's something, is there something wrong with me? Like, cause I'm looking around the room and all of these students, my fellow students and friends are engaging, like having these great conversations. And I just found myself like completely lost. Like, I don't want to do any of this. Not, everything is just not for me. So I'm having these thoughts, whatever, whatever. Flash forward to, I think it was February or March of this year, 2023. Mm -hmm. And this one night I was, I was sleeping. I was in a dead sleep. And I remember I woke up wide awake, opened my eyes, conscious. And I, I had the thought, I'm going to sell real estate. You just woke up in the middle of the night and you were like, I'm going to sell real estate. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay. Mm-hmm. And I went back to bed after that. And in the morning, I started taking the steps to start my career. <laughs> <laughs> so when did she woke up businesswoman? But that really is, I mean, like, that is really what it is. Like, with anything, like, sometimes it, it's just, like, that inner knowing. And sometimes you need to just, like, keep going through the steps until you find it. Because it's, like, some people are like, Lauren, how do you figure out what you want to do? And it's, like, I feel like it, like, finds you in a way. Like, you were meant for that. Like, you were supposed to do that. So... I mean, you have a little bit of, like, leverage. Your mom's in the get business, but, like, mm -hmm. how did you, like, how did, like, I don't know. People kept just being, like, I talked to, like, a few people. I had actually interviewed with this brokerage. I think they had already thought I was, like, in the process of getting my license. I, like, yeah, no. So this was before the course. Before the course, but okay. everyone kept talking about Tom Cusack. Tom Cusack. And I was, like, what, who is this guy? Like, I kind of just, like, thought he was, I don't know. I'm, like, who is this guy? And, like, going, you know, but, like, going to him was just, like, su such a unique um, and touching experience. Like, the, mm -hmm. the someone that's been through it and teaching you and so like so how did how did we end up 
in the same class together. Oh my gosh, so of course the first thing I did, I was researching online, but I also called my mom the very next day to tell her, and I was nervous to tell her. So you were still in Ohio at this time? Yes, okay. I, was, I was nervous to tell her because she had just sent me to a private Jesuit college in, Clar er, in, <laughs> in Cleveland. And um, newsflash, you don't need a college degree to sell, <laughs> to sell real estate. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, That's no. That's good. I like that. <laughs> right. So I'm like, oh, no, she's not going to be happy about this one. But I called her and she was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited for you. Aww. Oh, my gosh, you need to talk to this person and that person. Like, because she's she's a lender. So she's already kind of in the game. So I was pleasantly surprised with her reaction. Um, and she was like, oh, my gosh, you're taking you. You're going to QSAC. Mm -hmm. She knew who QSAC was. Yeah, okay. And she knew that I wanted to learn in person. I'm not an online person. And I feel like it's too easy to, like, BS through. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, okay. But you know what? I've talked to a few people who've done the online course, and it, it took them like six months to finish. It took us two weeks, nine to two five. Two weeks. I'd rather do that any day long or yeah. all day long. Um, so, yeah, so I went online. I found Tom's website, um, and I was emailing with Rosemary, who is Tom's business partner, and I told her, where do I send my check? That's Astra. awesome. Yeah. I almost want to like talk to the people that like if you're literally uh, deja vu. This is weird. Okay, I almost want to talk to the people that like if you're interested in real estate, like what it is really going to take. So we've already found the place where now we're just like plugging Tom, but also like he deserves it. But basically, <laughs> you're gonna find a school that you want to go to, um, and I kind of want to talk prices a little bit for people and like just like logistics. So for us, we decided to do nine to five for two weeks, but you can also do like like um. Like evening classes for like, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was like a couple a month. months or so. Oh, okay. Was it only a month? Yes. Okay. So there, that's an option too. If you already have a nine to five that you like can't give up or mm -hmm. whatever. We did it through the summer, which was like kind of nice. Everyone has like extra time. And then like, do you remember how much it was? I think it was like 600 or 575. Yeah, or it was like 595. So $600. Honestly, not horrible. No, it's sometimes like when I, before I got into real estate, people would be like, just so you know, like be prepared because you're not going to be making money and you have to pay for your schooling and you have to pay for your fees. Dues and, and fees. Yeah, like your, your dues to the, like BNAR and all this stuff, which is true. Mm -hmm. But also like how much did you just pay to go to college? Right. You know, like. Right. And you have to look at it as an investment yes. because if you're looking at it as like, oh my gosh, I'm losing this money and wasting that money, like you're just not going to make it. Then you weren't planning on to win anyways if you're just thinking about how much money it was going to cost to win. Exactly right. And we all were well prepared with that, um, with not making money. Yeah. I mean, Tom told us what, six months mm -hmm. of reserves? Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. He's like, if you have six months, you can get into real estate. And me and Izzy made a pact of like a month ago. And we're like, all right, we're not allowed to quit for five years, <laughs> which I think five years from now, we're going to be very successful. And I get excited to look back at this podcast. But like, you're almost like willing to like bear down and, and put that grit on of being like, okay, I might not sell a house for a year. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that's not us. But like, I went into this like fully being like, I'm not even going to, like, huff and puff until, like, 12 months go by. And not to, like, speak that over me either. Mm -hmm. Like, I already have a – I do have a first client that we've done showing to all that stuff. But, you know, like, it's just, like – it's, like, kind of – it's not intimidating, but it's just – it's a it's a task. It's a and big it's, task. It's building a business. Yeah. Rome wasn't built in a day, people. <laughs> we can't – that's not how it goes. And some and this goes back, and we, we talk about this. We've talked about this before. Um, that th this industry is very much so delayed gratification, mm. which is something that in today's world, we are so used to that now, now, because we're texting and we're on social media. We're so used to, to getting things so quickly that when things take time, it, it puts us off and it discourages us and it makes us think, oh my gosh, is this even worth it? I just had this conversation with my cousin the other night. We went to dinner and she was just like, Izzy, I'm just, so she's an esthetician. So oh, she love does that. facials, waxing. And, you know, of course, when you're first starting out, you don't have, you're not, booked you're not yeah. fully booked and having this client and that client it takes so much time and she was just being discouraged with me and I'm like this is so funny that this is happening because we talk about this all the time delayed gratification I think we say that and you specifically say that every phone call that we have 
like and it is and sometimes it's not easy to like think that but it's also like the you find the little wins in every day whether you're going out a listing you're going with a show you're connecting with a new mentor those are the things that you have to you have to like be prepared not to have immediate success but also finding success in the little things like just because you're not receiving a million dollar check doesn't mean you didn't just make a great connection or film a great mm-hmm. podcast or do whatever and it's the little wins that build up to the big wins. So, okay, let's go back to Cusack a little bit. Okay. So, we're in class. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if there's anything we can paint a picture in, but... Wait, but this is so funny, you guys, because I immediately recognized Lauren because I noticed... I mean, we weren't the only people in the class, but I noticed, like, you and I were, like, dressing to the nines <laughs> for this <laughs> class. I would show up in, like, neon green, neon pink. We were, like, dressed up, you guys. Yeah. And there were people, like, in their sweatshirts and sweatpants. I needed a good excuse to get up that early in the morning. I'm like, I need to like my outfit for the entire rest of the day. But also, (laughs) it's like, you dress for success. Yeah, yeah. If you're dressed like, you know, you just rolled out of bed, like, I'm just, at least for me, I'm going to stay in that mindset that I'm still in bed. Absolutely. You got to dress and be prepared and, you know, look your best and be your best. But I noticed that about Lauren. And I think the f- one of the first <laughs> things we said to each other was like complimenting each other's outfits. <gasps> oh, wait, it was. It was. <laughs> you said something about like my pants or my yeah, dress or something. I think you're like, I don't know. I feel like I liked your trousers or something. I don't know. I always like all of your outfits. So. Oh my God, you too. <laughs> As I'm in, like, my tailgate gear, I'm yes. like, let's host a party. Yes. So, yeah, we, we sat across each other from the room. Yeah. Or in we were, the like, in opposite corners of the room. Exactly. And um, Tom, Tom's Tom energy. Tom just, like, little old man with, like, funky, fun shoes on. Mm-hmm. Like, the most, like, charismatic person ever. And he's so energetic. He is 85 years old and teaching. Like he has more teaching. He has more energy than some 22-year-olds I know. I <laughs> have more energy than me. I don't like, know. Uh, God bless that man. He So the thing about Tom is you can tell he is so passionate mm-hmm. about this business that you can tell it doesn't feel like work for yeah. him. It's a passion and I think that that's something that separates you from other people. Mm. I think like you which I know it's like this day and age and people value different things, but you can't idolize money. Whatever you, we all want to be successful and take care of our families, but like you need to love what you're doing or be interested in your money or in your money. Not, you need to be interested in what you're doing because the money will come with whatever that you're passionate and doing. And if you're caught up in these like commission checks or whatever and, you're never going to love what you do. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, like someone could tell me, oh, Lauren, you'll make like $100,000 doing the accountant. I would be depressed for the last, rest of my life if I was an accountant. Like, I'm just not that girl. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, but like connecting with people, bringing people to their first houses, dressing up as a realtor. Like, I'd love to, like, it is acting the part. And they always say, like, be, I would rather be overdressed than underdressed mm-hmm. any day of the week. Mm-hmm. I remember, I forget what I walked into. I think it was like my first day of like training at my brokerage. And I wore this like hot pink floor <laughs> floor length dress. <laughs> and I was like a little bit like, did I do too much? And then like someone had said like, always dress above and beyond because you're going to stick out from everyone else. And it's so. First it's so impressions true. are everything. And you know, it's so funny. Talking, speaking about dressing up, so yesterday it was a Sunday. I was running errands. I was hanging a few things in my room, and I was going to Target, and I wore a dress, a sweater dress with this long leather, black leather jacket, boots, did my makeup, put my hair up, and I had, like, three people ask me, what are you so dressed up for? Like, who are you? What what are you so dressed up for? And I'm like, I'm dressed up for life. (laughs) Life is an occasion enough that we're alive. So why wouldn't I dress up and feel good? Yeah. I don't know. That's just my my take on it. Um, But there was something else I was going to piggyback off of that you had said about dressing up. Look out the window. Maybe it'll bring it back to you. I'm going to start looking out my window every morning and be like, yes. And just thinking. Drink your tea. Drink your coffee. Enjoy yourself. Um, but yeah, I, oh, going back to the money, that's what it, that's what it was. So success, like we hear all this talk about success and, but it's like, how do you define success? It's literally where my mind went. I said, as soon as you said that, what is success? What is success to you, Lauren? Hmm, What is, okay. 
what is success to me, and this has been my, like, I don't know, this has come up a few times, and I hope this is still the same in five years, is I can wake up on a Monday, and if I don't want to do work for the first three hours, I don't have to do work on a Monday. I can see my family when I want to. I'm comfortable. I can buy clothes if I want to see them, but I also, like, I don't... I don't want to be consumed by material goods. I want a beautiful place that I can spend time with my friends and talk to my friends and continue to have conversations every day with people that I love, whether it's for businesses on a podcast or if it's just, hey, come over and have coffee and like talk with me and like let's talk about like your goals or let's talk about what you love or let's ponder about God or like do that. It's just um, I never realized that I was doing it when I owned the clothing line for the years and or whatever and you know even different avenues that I took even though they weren't conventional everything that I was doing was relationship building and I never knew Mm. that that's what I was doing and you get into the real estate game and Mm. I was actually a few months into it and they're like this is literally all about relationships everything is about relationships Mm -hmm. in this industry yeah whether it's with another realtor with it's with a lender and obviously with your clients everything everything you're rep your reputation is such a scary word, but your reputation and what people say about you when you're not in the room is one of the most valuable things that you can uphold and attain for yourself. Wow. That is, that is wow. No, it's so true though, because that is something, that is a mentality that I came into this industry with was the fact that relationships and caring about people and not Mm. caring about people because you see them as a check. You're going to get something out of them. Right. Nope genuinely caring about people i have uh, i've read a book recently i'm still reading it how to win friends and influence people yeah and it has taught me so much already just about just about listening listening to someone if you just take the time to actually listen to people Mm. you can get so much further than you can even imagine and knowing people's names, calling them by their first names. People, their name is special to them, whether it's subconscious or conscious. Yep. You feel something when someone calls you by your name. Especially may- like a stranger, you're like, oh my God, do you remember my name? Like, right. People love that. Because it's, it's important to people and it's important to converse with them and ask them questions. Don't assume anything, just, just put yourself out there, I think is, is so important. And honestly, that's why I am loving real estate as well, because not only as a profession, but it has been, and it will continue to be, such a personal growth tool mm-hmm. for me, I've noticed about myself. Um, so that's another reason why I, I just have grown to love the industry a lot because talking to other people, I mean, me and you have formed such a beautiful relationship. You are like one of my most valued friends. Like just like the fact that, and I mean that, like the fact that like we don't need to know each other for years and we both just genuinely want to see each other win and we're genuinely so like, how are you doing? Like how Mm -hmm. are, like are you feeling this way? Or, you know, congratulations, like that's amazing. I'm like, Izzy tells me all these things. I'm like, why are you not posting about that? Because that is amazing and like, you're you're thriving um it's just crazy dude the whole listening thing and i don't i think some of it's like part of the culture Mm -hmm. it's part of society it's that part of the like bam 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 of like social media but like the one thing that john spashek like mentor of mine like was on the podcast like Mm -hmm. seven seconds or just i've i've heard too when you're when you're talking with people because sometimes we can tend to ramble ourselves Mm -hmm. just the the leg tap when you feel yourself and you're like, okay. Cause people, the thing is too, is like people, um, when you're talking with someone, you know, no one likes that uncomfortable silence. No one likes seven it. seconds that the English right. language right. doesn't leave seven seconds for there to be no language. And you just exam you did, you did way better than I did because when John was doing it to me, I would last like one and a half seconds. I think you lasted like three because we're so used to being like, Oh, she's not talking anymore? Okay, it's my turn to talk. And which, like, most of the time, like, I kind of like my conversation like that. But right. it, is, it is a power move in sales to just be like... Let the other person talk. Yeah. Let the yeah. other person they talk. They will tell so much by just, like, being quiet and listening. They will tell you so much, more than you can even imagine, and then that will help you, in turn, to help them mm. fix their problems. Because in real estate, real estate is relationship building, 
as well as problem solving. I mm. would say those are two of the biggest things because each deal is unique. Each person is unique. Their problems are unique. Their life is unique. So being able to have the tools in your toolbox to recognize what that person needs, but also help them recognize. Mm. There's always this thing we go by, especially in my office. Don't tell, ask. So when you're dealing with clients, don't, don't tell them, oh, you should do this. Ask them. Ask them questions so mm. you can understand them. What real estate is, if you're trying to figure out if real estate is for you, you're serving people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of careers, you won't even realize what you're doing, but you are serving people. Whether you're an actual server, whether you're an accountant, or you're selling people clothes, you're serving people. But with real estate, if you're questioning, if you should get into it, you need to be okay with helping others with the possibility of not getting anything from it, from not getting a return from it. You mm -hmm. need to be willing to show someone home and if that home is not for them, if that home is not going to meet their needs, you shouldn't be trying to, which you would hope that real, realtors aren't doing that, like mm -hmm. selling on the home, but you have to be okay with, okay, well, this is the fifth home I showed them and this is definitely not for them. Like, you just have to accept that that's what it is. And like, again, delayed gratification, hopefully in the Patience. long run. Patience. Yeah, it's good and it's fine, but you have to be good with people and you have to be willing to listen to people and serve people and take care of people. It's the, the uh, leadership style of, of serving. Mm. Serving people, not for you, for them. Because you know what? And something I've realized, when you take genuine interest in somebody else, mm. they feel that. They can feel in the first two minutes of talking to you if you genuinely care or if you could care less. And I've even experienced that just with going to events in the industry and talking with other professionals, mm. I've felt that. I've felt the, oh my gosh, they really don't give up about what I'm saying. They just want to get back to their point. And that leaves such a bad taste in it someone's like, mouth. Like, like used in a way? like Used and unimportant. Like just like, but almost like feed, and this isn't just real estate, this is just like life in general and like, right. you know, but like, especially like being one of the youngest pe like women or people in the room, like sometimes it's like, are you just like using me to like feed your ego right now? Or like, do you actually want to conversate with me? Like, it's just like, you know, like expressing genuine interest in people and that'll get you farther than you'll ever imagine. And not that exactly. it's even about that, but people want to be known and they want to be heard they want to be seen they want to feel important that is the and i learned this from my my book people the desire to feel important mm -hmm. is like something is the number one desire that us as humans feel to the point where there are cases of people going literally insane mentally insane in a delusional non-reality world to feel important oh yeah like which video games like <laughs> or just like there was a case or of just a, like we'll keep going queen there, there was, was a <laughs> there was a case of a woman who got she was married to a man she she wanted all these children her her husband wasn't for him he didn't want children she did not feel important th through their relationship. It mm. wasn't serving her. And she literally went psychiatrically insane, like in a mental hospital, mm. and was convinced that she had three children and knew their names, knew everything about their lives. She had no children, you guys. But it goes back to the point of those children was, were such a desire to her to feel important as a person in the world Mm. That she literally went insane and was living in a false reality where she had three children. Wow. So, going back to the point of making people feel heard and seen. When people speak to me and they're speaking so profound, I get so excited. I want to ask you a thousand questions and I want to like immediately answer and like realizing that like sometimes that's not coming off across the best way and also like just sometimes it's like sometimes it's even more profound to just like sit there and like think about it and like think about how things overlap and intertwine and like as you're speaking and, and speaking on this knowledge of listening and being seen um, I think 
that goes into like where we've ended up in our careers and where we've planted the seed of baby realtors and baby entrepreneurs. So we feel seen and heard and valued, but also are getting educated. So we meet each other in com- Tom Cusack. We, mm-hmm. we go to real estate school and then we leave. And you were kind of like, you were kind of like fresh out of the gate of like, you kind of knew where you wanted to go. Like you're like, I, I, I have an interview with like Keller Williams, mm-hmm. like, you know, whatever. And like, for me, like I was like, Oh, okay, Oh, like, Keller Williams to me, I mean, Keller Williams is literally number one in the world, like Mm -hmm. not the United States, like literally number one in the world of like largest, um, have amazing credentials. And like, for me, I'm like, oh gosh, I don't want to get like lost, like a, like a hunt or like a whatever. Like Mm -hmm. I, and I also kind of know my style. Like even when I was going to college, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to UB like a, you know, whatever school, like I need like a a smaller school. So like I ended up at like Metro Roberts, which Metro Roberts is the fourth largest in the area, but they're the only independently owned and it's worked really well for me. I feel really well seen and I feel educated, I feel nurtured, I've been plugged into Mm -hmm. such amazing mentors, but I also know that you love where you're at. So, like, where did you, where did you get plugged into the team? And, like, I kind of want you to talk through your, like, interview process and just, like, where you ended up where you were in your mentorship. Yeah, for sure. So, first thing I want to say is Metro Roberts and Keller Williams are very similar brokerages, Mm -hmm. just in the fact that they are agent-centric and education-based, which I think is so important when it comes to a brokerage because like like I said earlier the course really it teaches you the technicalities but you forget that like the bare minimum anyway like literally bare minimum right the only way you're really going to learn is through experience so having people at a brokerage who are willing to support you and willing to guide you willing to help you that is everything so (sighs) Keller Williams all right Wait, so I want to pause like two seconds because I'm yes. like, we're kind of in, we're in like the real estate world now. But like, if mm-hmm. kind of you don't know, like a brokerage is basically a place where you're hanging your license. They're above mm-hmm. you. They're holding your U.S. insurance. Like, you know, if, if you're not doing your job well, they basically are covering your butt in an aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're, they're basically the company that you work for, but not really because you're an independent contractor. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are who is above you and you pay into them. Um, yes. So yeah. But, okay. So you're at Keller Williams. Yeah. So I, I had interviewed with a couple teams, one of them being um the josh james team where i'm at now uh we had interviewed over a course of like uh, i don't even know like three four five weeks did you just walk in there like how did you get connected with them yeah so my mom the other team that i had um interviewed with initially uh my mom had actually told me about her this team Mm -hmm. and i had reached out to them just to start the conversation so i started talking with them um and then I heard about Josh James and I was like, okay, I'd also be interested in talking to him because I was talking to everyone. Um, I had spent some time, you know, looking into the different people of these brokerages and, you know, kind of getting a feel for what aligned best with me. So, yeah, so I started the interview process. It kind of went throughout the summer. Um, I had a few vacations, so I was, you know, I was taking my time Mm -hmm. with kind of deciding. I knew from the start that I was leaning towards Keller Williams solely because of what they could offer me. Mm -hmm. I feel like the old school way of thinking is, you know, a company is like, what are they going to bring to the table, which is important. I'm not denying that. But you, you want to be with someone who's going to invest in you as well. What are you paying into? Like, I remember, like, first bear, 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 like, figuring out the real estate process. I'm like, why am I paying a company, like, yeah. money? Like, they're, like, I don't, like, I don't understand. Like, but you need someone that's going to give you education, going to give you opportunities, like, make that money worth it per se you need value in what you're paying yeah yeah which i believe that keller williams and metro are the only two that cap yeah well so keller williams was actually the first like company brokerage that actually introduced that cap system right um so cap basically means that you only pay into a certain percentage and then you're done so if you're doing really well in real estate like you're capping like you're capping like in a month (laughs) yeah metro roberts actually love metro i'm pretty sure is the lowest in the area it's only it just went down to um $10,000. $10,000. Minus 10000 as well. Is it really? Yes. Okay. Yes. Which, you know, people are, people at the office, you know, I always see, oh, congratulations on capping. And especially for the well-established, uh, well-established agents, it is not taking them long no. to cap. 
Do they? At all. We were at this panel the other day, and it's a super successful successful company. They've been at a few brokerage like over the years. Like they've done it since the early two thousands. They kept in January. That means from wow. January to December, they're not paying anyone anything. They're just getting a straight commission, and they're getting a hundred percent commission. Yeah, like those other brokerages. There's certain ones that you just never cap. You're paying into them. It doesn't matter if you're All selling $10 million in real estate. You're still giving them whatever your split is. Hunt, Howard Hanna. Is Howard Hanna like that too? Yes. I was like no name in it. Um, <laughs> Izzy's like, yep, these are the places. Yeah, I'm exposing them. No, I'm kidding. But no, you, they're you all can great. find, it's not, it's common knowledge. It, it's what works for you. Like I've I've talked with agents over at, a, uh, at Hunt, at MJ Peterson, and they love it there. Which is fine. It's it's what works for you. I have a story to tell you after. Okay. I right, have that off. Keep going though. Okay. It is what works for you. Yes. So um, during the interview process, you know, I got in touch with Josh. Uh, spent several weeks talking with him, and you know, he uh, he was some th- someone that I took interest in just because he is a real estate investor himself. Yeah. Which I think is so important. You know, I've read this one thing where it was like I, you know realtors who don't take their own advice there's something a little it's a little sketchy right it's like a marketing agency that doesn't have great marketing like right (laughs) so he (laughs) we had conversated he had him and his wife emily they have i think i believe 27 or 28 rental properties that they own amazing so he's literally amazing right and he's very into you know building all of that stuff, continuing to sell real estate, but building all of that stuff in the background. Mm -hmm. So it's building, 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 building. And then, you know, there's one day, the whole goal, and this goes back to why we got into real estate, financial freedom. Mm. Financial freedom is my biggest goal in life yeah well I love the question and I love that you asked me a question earlier but what does success look for like for you what is financial freedom for you so I think that what's so important with financial freedom is investing your money wisely and not being so caught up in keeping up with the Joneses Mm. if you understand that phrase we're not worried about the next Mercedes or the Audi or the Gucci bell or the Gucci bell, like, it's living below your means. That is what success is for me. I don't need all these fancy things to feel okay. Do I want to drive a nicer car than I'm currently driving right now? Yes. But does it have (laughs) to be a luxury car? (laughs) No. Hey, I'll drive like a two-year-old Jeep Cherokee or... Jeep Cher- Cherokee, you're doing pretty they're so well. They're nice. They're so nice. Like, I, I I, think in life and in business, especially in this business, it's, and you'll see it, it's so easy to get caught up in that, oh my it's gosh. It's comparison. That's what it is. It's all comparison. Right. And, you know. <sighs> comparison is a thief of joy, and we all have times in our life where we get caught up in it. Right. And you don't even know you're doing it. You're like, oh, her hair looks like that. Her skin I should looks be like doing that. this. Oh, she just got new lemon leggings. I should. Okay, well, maybe she's in credit card debt. Or, like, maybe she's, like, miserable. Like, maybe someone <laughs> died and she's trying to fill a void. And not to get so deep, I'm being dramatic for storytelling purposes. But, like, yeah. you never know what someone's going through. Mm-hmm. And, like, just because something looks like this on the outside doesn't mean it looks equally as beautiful on the inside or in their home or whatever. Comparison why waste your time comparing your compare comparing your insides to someone's outsides take that literally that same time and work towards yourself um comparison has been something that i've had to become very aware of that i was doing in the last year specifically and like even recently there was seen some girl post like a thirst trap like whatever like do you girl (laughs) like whatever and i was like oh my god i'm literally at the gym in between sets like not doing anything and i'm looking at this girl's butt like just honestly i'm like wow well okay maybe for professional but i'm looking at her body i'm like wow and then i'm like lauren Put the phone down and lift the weights. And not, I'm beautiful too. It's fine. But like, it's just crazy how much time you can take comparing yourself or telling yourself you're not good enough in whatever Mm -hmm. aspect, career aspect, where it's like, take, get Mm -hmm. yourself, get out of your own way Mm -hmm. and go work towards whatever you want, Mm -hmm. whether it's the Grand Cherokee or the butt, whatever. (laughs) Yeah. It's up to you. You can, you know, but I think that's so important. And taking, 
because I, I, I've, uh, I've also had this revelation this week where I'm like, am I taking other people's version of success and making it my own? Whoa. Whoa. Like, oh my gosh, they are, and it's so, it's so difficult as new people because I'm in this office, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I should be doing this. And it's like, Izzy, why are you telling yourself that? You are your own person, and that is completely fine. That's why I got into this industry so I could be myself mm. and not, and sometimes, you know, that's tricky because I'm on a team and my team is very into like, this is your, yes, you're on a team, but this is your business. So don't box yourself into anything. Do what you need to do, which is fine. But sometimes being on a team, I find myself, you know, thinking, oh my gosh, do I need to be doing this that this person is doing to be successful or so I can look like I'm, you know, putting effort in, but it's like, not everyone's effort is going to look the same and that's mm. fine. That's so, that's completely fine. You don't need to be making a million dollars a year to be happy. I was just listening to something today where it was talking about financial freedom and it's like, you need to de define what success looks for you. Like, looks like for you in terms of money or you're never going to have enough money nothing is ever going to be good enough if you don't know what you need mm. and for me i don't need to be in debt there are people out there who are making a lot of money but they're miserable they're up to their eyeballs in debt paying off the mercedes paying off the bmw yeah paying they're off making money but they're spending that money too exactly right so it's it's like your time where do you invest your time mm. in what you're doing um i think time is money and time is probably one of the i think your main resource that you have that we have as young professionals we have time mm. but with that being said or should i say and with that being said where are we going to spend our time to maximize or capitalize on what we want in life? Thank you for coming to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's beautiful. I love that. Um, I think that there's going to be a lot of amazing success in both of our paths. And I'm, I'm so happy and excited that we crossed paths when we did. And I think it was meant to be um, in God willing that our paths keep growing together mm -hmm. and we can cheer each other on. If you need some accountability, you need to find an accountability friend. Um, not that, I mean, we're just friends, but every month <laughs> since we've both gotten like licensed, like every month we check in, we have coffee and we just hang out and we just talk about it. And right now, though we've seen each other a lot this month, I feel like right now we're having having a little coffee day and it's just podcast edition cheers cheers um so yeah thank you for joining the podcast follow izzy on instagram it'll be linked down below uh, if you um yeah welcome 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 brought to go host and event coordinate all of the next events coming up check out the podcast uh subscribe and go bills go bills we'll talk to you we'll soon. see you tonight <laughs> bye i'm a little scared of the bills this season but like we love them forever. <laughs>